Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Singles Walking in Purpose where we are doing a four part series on abiding in Christ. If this is your first time seeing one of my videos, the point of this ministry is to equip and encourage you to be the bride of Christ. I am so very excited to share with you guys what I have been soaking in, what I've been applying to my life, what I've been striving to live out for the last several months. What my study time has been consumed by in all honesty so i'm excited to share it with you and i pray that it, has, it blesses you in the same way that it has blessed me so go ahead and grab your bibles and we're gonna start in john 15 verse 1. i'm only gonna read the first six verses today and we'll continue on to verse 11 as we continue in this series so we're gonna go ahead and start with john 15 and 1. And this is jesus talking he says i am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. So for this video, we're gonna kinda I'm gonna basically kinda answer three main questions. What is it what does abide mean? Why is it important? And how do you abide? based on the first six verses. So first and foremost, what does it mean to abide in Christ? So in its original language, if you've been rolling with me for any amount of time, you know I love to look words up in their original language because that gives us a better understanding of what it means. And abide means to remain, not to depart, to continue to be present and to be kept. And can we just have a little side note right there? To be kept, oh, to be kept by Jesus. The secret to not falling away is to abide in Christ, to stay connected to the vine. So many are, listen, there are so many people falling away from the faith right now. It's not even funny. But the thing is, if you stay connected to the vine, Jesus said, if you abide in me, if you remain in me, if you continue in me, if you don't depart from me, I won't depart from you. That is a promise. If you stay connected to the vine, he's gonna stay connected to you. I fully believe that God is able to keep us. Amen, amen. Okay, off my soapbox now. <laughs> so abide, literally the word abide literally appears 10 times between verses four and 10. And it appears an 11th time in verse 16. So anytime you see the same word or phrase used multiple times in, a, in one passage, that means that the author is trying to get your attention and trying to get you to understand something important. And in this passage, it is to abide. Jesus continually told his disciples to abide in him. He wanted them to understand that though he was about to depart from them physically, he would never be disconnected from them. Because he had just told them about the promise of the Holy Spirit. Come on. <laughs> he had just told them about the promise of the Holy Spirit. So with the Holy Spirit, we would never be disconnected from him. He won't, he's not with us in the physical, but he's still with us as we abide in him. He wanted them to realize that they would never be disconnected from him as long as they abide in him. And he wanted them to realize that he was their source. Jesus is the source of life. Jesus is our source for everything. When a branch is connected to the vine, they are getting nutrients for life. Apart from the vine, a branch cannot survive. When you cut a branch off of a tree, it dies. It is completely dead. One of my neighbors just cut a couple branches off their tree. When they first laid it out on the curb, it was green. It's been out there for a couple of days. It is completely brown now. It is completely dead because, it's, because it has been disconnected from the source. It has been disconnected from its source of life, its source of nutrients. And if we disconnect from our source, that we will have no spiritual life. And the thing is, we can get so sidetracked now into thinking that our job is our source of life, our pastor is our source of life, or our church is our source of life, or this relationship, this friendship is our source of life. But we have to remember that Jesus is our connection. 
that Jesus is our source of life. If you disconnect from him to connect with something else or somebody else, God is not going to bless that because God is not in it. You're not connected to him. He can't give you the nutrients that you need to sustain whatever it is that you are trying to sustain. He can't give you the wisdom that you need to sustain that relationship. He can't give you what it is that you need, the nutrients, <laughs> the 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 wisdom the plans he can't give it to you because you're not connected to the source Whew, jesus in what it means to abide in christ is to draw near to him he says abide in me and i in you draw close to god and he will draw close to you right because the thing is abiding in christ is a daily pursuit it is a conscious choice to connect with him just as you would with any natural relationship Though Christ is the initiator of our relationship, our job is to respond to him. The question is, will we respond to him in rejecting him or will we respond to him in abiding in him and pursuing him back? That's what abiding is, pursuing him back. It's always so easy to understand this in a natural sense. When a man expressed his interest in a woman, in a woman, he shows it in his pursuit of her. And it's the woman's job to respond to that pursuit and to let him know, hey, I'm interested in you too. I want you too. And a woman, in a sense, pursues a man back. I want you. I'm interested in you. I don't want anybody else. So I'm not going to give my time, my energy, my devotion to any other man but to you, because my eyes are on you. My eyes are set on you. Will we do that with the Lord? And it, the thing is, Jesus has demonstrated his love for us. He's pursued us. He showed us his love for us and dying on the cross for our sins, tearing the veil that separated us from the Father, allowing us to approach a holy God. Our response to him, us letting him know that he has our time, our attention, our energy, our 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 sheer devotion is us abiding in him, us pursuing him every day. We show God that we reject him when we when we go our own way, when we disconnect from the vine, when we don't pursue him on a daily basis. How do we abide? We abide by spending time with the Lord every single day. That's pursuing him in prayer. That's praying without ceasing, right? And we'll get into this another um in the next video, which I'm really excited about. But we abide in God by abiding in his word. But just in the same way that you want somebody to show you that they're interested in you, show God that you're interested in him. The thing is, God wants us to abide in him. In the same way that you text your friends all day, you text your boo-boo all day, you text people all day long, you, text, you talk to people all day long, give God that same energy and talk to him all day long. We forget that it's a privilege that we're able to abide in Christ the beauty that we are able to draw near to God. Again, this was great. This was a, a strange concept, a strange idea for people in that time to abide in Christ because so many people thought that God was aloof and that he was a far away God. But Jesus tore the veil that separated us from a holy God and allowed us access to approach God's throne of grace. We can come to God for ourselves so, but so often we forget that that's a privilege, that we can approach a holy God. He is completely holy, sinless, and we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And God, in the blood of Jesus, when we accept God's free gift of salvation, the blood of Jesus washes us clean as snow, that we can approach a holy God and we stand in Christ's righteousness. He sees the righteousness of his son when he looks at us and we get the opportunity to abide in Christ. And the thing is, God wants us to abide in Christ. He wants us. That again, that was such a far fetched idea for people in that time to understand that he wants us, that he wants us close to him. May we never forget the privilege that we have in abiding in Christ. I get so excited talking about this y'all. So, we talked about how, what it means to abide in Christ and how to abide in Christ. But why is it so important to abide in Christ? First and foremost, I kind of already talked about it. But the thing is, is that when we abide in Christ, he abides in us. When that branch abides in the vine, again, they're getting all that nutrients. They're getting what they need to sustain life. 
Jesus gives us everything that we need to sustain this life. Everything pertaining to life and godliness is attached to abiding, is attached to him. It's connected to him. Everything that we need is found in him. When, when you abide in him, when you're pursuing him, you will lack absolutely nothing. Because the thing is, even again, when you look at it, whether it's in a natural relationship or in a branch literally being taken off of a tree, when you, when you cut a branch off of a tree, like I talked about, it's going to die. When you stop connecting with your friend, when you start, stop connecting with um, a romantic interest, the relationship is going to die. There's going to be no life to that because you've stopped connecting. The thing is, you can't just check in on Sundays with God and expect to be sustained throughout the whole week. You can't expect for a deep, vibrant relationship. You can't expect to have green leaves if you're only checking in once a week. So one of the what things that is important is because he abides in us and we, when we abide in him, he abides in us. The second reason it's important to abide is because when you abide, you bear fruit. In verse two, Jesus said that Jesus prunes the branches that bear fruit so that they can bear even more fruit. And I know if you watched my last video, <laughs> I talked about how the Lord had been pruning me for so long and pruning does not feel good. And I understand it. I get it. It doesn't feel good but it's for our good so that we can bear more fruit, right? Pruning takes place to get rid of excessive growth and to get rid of dead leaves, dead branches, to get rid of death. This is um, so interesting to me because um, growing up, my parents, mainly my dad, had um, these plants that would literally grow all over our uh, family room and our dining room. I mean, literally all over the place. I wish I had a picture. If I have one, I'll put it up or try to find the plant that it was so you guys can get an idea of what, I, what I'm talking about. But it literally was growing everywhere. And every so often my dad would have to prune it. He would have to cut off um, the leaves that were dying or he would um, have to cut off excessive growth. Because the thing is, if you don't prune excessive growth, it can actually hinder the growth of fruit because it's hindering it from getting the proper amount of water. It's hindering it from getting the appropriate amount of sunlight it becomes a hindrance. How does that relate to us? Oftentimes we take on too much. We take, we say yes to too many things. We take on more things than we're supposed to. And it hinders us from properly connecting to the vine and allowing us to get the proper nutrients that we need for life from getting the appropriate sunlight and from getting the appropriate water. Come on somebody, water of the word. It hinders us from connecting properly. There's also pruning when there's dead leaves on our branches. The thing is dead leaves and dead branches still suck up nutrients because they're still connected. They're taking nutrients from the ones from the leaves that are actually alive. So God has to cut it all. Sometimes God has to cut off certain things and certain people in your life that are hindering you, that are not producing any spiritual life. He has to, you have to go through a process of laying aside every weight and sin that's hindering you from running your race well. So pruning is not meant to hurt you is not meant to kill you it's meant for you to produce more fruit so if there's an ex if there's some ex excess going on cut it off if there's some dead leaves some dead things cut it off so that you can grow so jesus prunes the branches that are fruitful so that they can bear more fruit but jesus says that he takes away branches that don't bear fruit and that if you don't abide in him that person is like a branch that is thrown out and is thrown in the fire to be burned. Listen, if you're not abiding in Christ, you're not connected to the source of life, which means there's no spiritual life. You are spiritually dead. And because there, you're producing no growth, you're again, taking up nutrients from the branches that are producing fruit, God is gonna cut you off and throw you into the fire to be burned. This is telling us a consequence of not abiding in Christ. You're gonna get cut off and thrown into the fire because you're gonna be a hindrance to the rest of the branches, to the rest of the vine. Christ said, apart from me, you can do nothing. If you don't have the nutrient, listen, we all know that if you don't eat, you are no good. <laughs> you're weak, you can't think straight, you are no good. Apart from Christ's nutrients, you are no good to the kingdom of God. You're, no, you're not producing any kind of fruit for his glory. So abiding in Christ is remaining in him, continuing in him, not departing from him. It's a conscious daily pursuit of Christ, 
abiding in his presence through prayer and abiding in his word, which again, we'll get into more in the next video. And we do this so that he can abide in us so that we can get what we need to sustain the life down here on earth and then be able to experience it fully in heaven one day. And so that we can bear more fruit and allow him to prune us so that we can. And those that don't abide in Christ, he's going to cut off those branches and, and throw them into the fire to be burned. So I pray that this video was a blessing to you. I pray that it encouraged you and it challenged you. And I pray that you will abide in Christ. And I want to challenge you that if there is anything in your life that is hindering you from connecting properly to the vine, to, to get rid of it, to cut it off and to pursue God all day long. It's again, we, we, we do it with everybody else. Why can't we do it with the creator of the universe and, and, and remember the gift that we have in connecting with, with the God of the universe and, and not taking advantage of that and remembering that privilege. So I challenge you with that. And I pray this encouraged you. Um, again, the next video, we're going to talk about abiding in his word. I'm super excited about that. I'm telling you that real talk, that video is going to be life changing. And I'm not just saying that it literally changed my life. And I know that if you will, if you let it, it'll change yours as well. So until the next video in two weeks, grace and peace.